What is wrong with you people? There's been a lot of discussion about this pedophilia and child molestation issue very recently. Farmit did a video about it, people have been getting all in a tizzy about it back and forth, and I wanted to lay out some ground rules here, and more importantly that, I wanted to elucidate the entire discussion for you, and put it in real, simple, basic, easy to understand, and honest terms for all of us to have an agreement on. First and foremost, child molestation is not pedophilia. Let, let's talk about that here. One of these things, child molestation, is an action. The other, pedophilia, is a sexual preference or deviation or whatever term you desire to use. It is not an action. It's a thought. Now, I make this distinction first for a reason. This law system we have makes this distinction. Thoughts are not punished. That's the thing. Actions are punished. Are you guilty of a crime for thinking about killing someone? No. No, you aren't, are you? No one is going to jail because they fantasized about killing somebody. No one is going to jail because they had the thought, I want to kill someone, I want to steal their stuff, or I want to hit somebody. No, no, it's when thought becomes action, they have violated the law. This is standard. This is more than standard. This is fundamental to the entire process of our laws, that we will not prosecute people until they have stepped beyond the bounds of what is considered right, and when they have harmed somebody. And yes, there are nuances and perhaps exceptions to this whole idea with hate crimes, right? Hate crimes. That, but see, the thing is, even there, they're adding thought to an action. They're saying that, well, this action that was bad was taken with an additionally harmful thought. We will prosecute. It's never prosecuted where someone just had a hateful thought and went to jail. That doesn't happen, and it shouldn't. Because the core of our law is prosecuting people for what they have done, judging people for the actions they have taken, for the harm they have done, for the damage they do. These are what matter to the law, these factors, not are you personally offended, not do, is it revolting, or do I not like it, or am I uncomfortable with it? These do not enter the law. These should not ever enter the law, in fact, because that makes the law then a matter of personal opinion. Whatever somebody doesn't like, or a group of people doesn't like, is that how we prosecute things? Now, we don't like that. Or, I mean, are we going to bring back the witchcraft trials? Like, people are going to say, you know, witchcraft is bad according to the Bible. It's illegal. I mean, it's abhorrent to quite a few Christians, right? It, it, the Bible says kill these people. Or homosexuality. Are we actually just going to say, let's make these things illegal now, just because people think about doing them? No. No, that's stupid, and we all know it. We can't extend the law to work that way. It can't go to thought crime, or there's no freedom. Because the essence of freedom is right here. You have to be able to think whatever you want. This has to be free, or no one is free. All right, so point two here, and I think in a way this is almost even more important than point one because of how simple this is, which is that fantasy and reality are different, right? Yes. We can all agree on this. Things that are fantasy are not real. Things that are real are not fantasy. Okay, now that we've established this, wherein has the pedophile who only does fantasy broken the law? Where has he harmed anyone? Where is this? Let's just say he has his own little perverse fantasies in his mind. He's not looking at any real child pornography or anything like that. Just it's all in his head. He keeps it to himself. That's it. Who is he hurting? What is happening here that is in any way bad for anyone? In fact, there are non-offending adult pedophiles who maintain healthy adult relationships with other adult people in consenting, entirely normal relationships. They just have this as an additional fantasy of theirs. I mean, you may not agree with it. In fact, I don't... You know, the whole issue is... Oof, right? But we have to step beyond that revulsion that we can feel at this topic and accept that we don't have the right to make that judgment beyond a personal level. You may say, I know this guy is a pedophile. I do not like him or that fact. That's fine. You have the right to do that, and I will defend that. You do not have the right to attack that person just because of their fantasies. Because you see, and this is the mistake so many people make here, is they assume that fantasy will become reality. They assume that desires must be acted upon. Oh, the pedophile, they, they have fantasies about it, right? So they're going to act on it eventually. Well, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is an argument people are making. What? I mean, okay, so I have a fantasy about having sex with someone. Am I going to rape them if they say no? Or let's say I have a desire at the moment. I want to take something that I can't pay for. You know, I can't afford that. I want it. Oh, man, it'd be nice to just take that. 
Does that mean I have to take it? I'm going to take it for certain? I'm a criminal just waiting to happen? No. No. Well, no, I mean, this is a difference of degrees because we're talking about a mental disorder that's a compulsion and stuff. Well, see then, what that brings into play is when are we just going to start locking people up for having mental disorders? Is that where we go? Is, okay, you are a pedophile. We are going to lock you up just because of that. All right, well, where do we go well, no, then no, from it's there? A, it, it's not an issue that we're going to lock them up because they're pedophiles. It's that we have, to re we have to recognize that they're more dangerous because of this. So what's the answer? Lock them up? What do you do? You, well, what, what's your answer to this? Of course, we all know that some people go with the one bullet per brain solution. That's what they advocate. That is one of the worst things you can do. I mean, look at the Nuremberg trials, right? We hung lots of people over this whole, like, mass murder thing. Like, people are really serious about we agree that that is bad. But people go with this, well, the one exception rule. Oh, this group is different. Oh, they're pedophiles. We can just kill these people because they're different. That's dangerous thinking. And maybe in your head you can justify, let's apply this to pedophiles. But, and I know, I make this caveat now, the slippery slope argument is not something to counter something altogether. But it is something to consider because it is possible. And I at least submit it to you as something worth consideration. Which is that once we declare this one group of people is fair game because of how aberrant and terrible they are, what happens to the innocent who are caught up in these lynch mobs of vigilante justice propelled by this idea that these people are automatically evil? Many times has it happened throughout history. I don't need to cite specific examples. Just look at vigilante justice. Google it and see the numerous examples throughout history where people have destroyed a great evil person, right? Only for history to say it was that guy over there who actually did the crime. That dude who just got tortured to death, he was innocent. Just a guy. There. Screw him, right? We need to destroy the pedophiles. <laughs> he was just a casualty in a war. Is that what you want? I mean, is the innocent going to become collateral damage in your holy quest? for purity. There comes a point where in the process of attempting to save something, you destroy it so thoroughly, by the time you have saved it, there's nothing left. And by the time you have saved everyone from this danger, you will have destroyed the meaning of our laws, of freedoms, of the sanctity of human life. You're committing murder because when someone hasn't done anything at all, illegal, bad, or attacking you or anything, you just kill them. That's premeditated murder. And not only that, advocating pre-crime, thought crime, and the punishment of people who have done nothing illegal or wrong. We are defending non-offenders here. Non-offenders. Non-offenders. I repeat this frequently because there's a lot of people out there with selecting hearing issues on this where, oh, you're defending child molesters. No, no, don't you dare fucking accuse me of that. That's not the point of this. If you are molesting children, I want the law to come down on you with its full force. I am entirely against child molestation. And don't you dare try to obfuscate the issue by saying, oh, well, you are actually supporting them because you enable pedophiles. No, shut up. Shut up. Because, no. There are people who have issues, right? Okay, they like children. It's a fantasy of theirs. We can't just kill everyone we don't like or agree with. We have to tolerate these people, and we have to deal with them. And we have to deal with them civilly because it's a civilization that we all agreed together to ha be a part of. So let's punish the guilty who have committed crimes, and let's leave the innocent alone. Because that's the only distinction here that really matters. Not child molester versus pedophile, not a situational offender versus a pedophile, none of that. What matters is guilty or innocent. Are they guilty? If you say no, then what are you doing attacking them? If you want to argue that your vitriol should be spent on non-offenders instead of offenders, or on both equally, then any time you spend not going after the real offenders is time not spent going after the people hurting children. It's time spent with sticking your thumb up your ass, basically, because who are you stopping? Who are you protecting here if you're just going after people who don't do anything? Who aren't hurting anyone? That's the thing here. Again, if you hurt somebody, you should be punished. No ifs, ands, or buts. However, if you do not hurt anybody, you should not be punished. I think we can agree on this as a system. I want to be on the side of people who are against child molestation. I do, and I am on your side. That's the thing. But I can't stand with people who advocate the one bullet per brain solution or the all of these people need to be locked into camp solution or just blaming people who are innocent, non-offenders, for offenses they haven't committed. I can't be a part of that because that is aberrant to me as well. Punishing the innocent is wrong. That is where this argument lies. I want to punish the guilty. I want them to face justice for their crimes. 
I do not want the innocent to face justice for the crimes of the guilty. That is not fair, it is not right, and to accept this for anyone, no matter the horrendousness of the crime we fight, to accept that level of compromise with our own freedoms is to blow it all out of the water. Well, just this one time we can make the exception. How many more just this one times can we make thereafter? And how many times have we already made just this one time exceptions for other things in our society? It doesn't ever limit itself. And something as insidious as the evil of feeling good about yourself by destroying another because you find them repugnant, that is an insidious and rather addictive evil that is easy to make yourself feel good about. Oh, well, he was a pedophile. He obviously didn't deserve any sympathy. He was just a pedophile. No, you're dehumanizing. You're doing what a rapist does to his victim or a murderer. You're dehumanizing someone who is a human being with thoughts and feelings, emotions, friends, family. An important point to make here is that many of these non-offenders feel bad about their desires because they know that if they ever acted on them, this would ruin a child's life, potentially, forever. Like, even if it doesn't, somehow it's a horrible thing, and they know it. They don't want to hurt anybody either. They want help. And when we have this pervasive attitude that these people need to all die in a fire and they're good for firewood and Kenley and that's about it, or if we make this assumption that their fantasies dictate reality for them, that they must act on these desires, then why are they going to try to get help? I mean, they're going to probably be afraid to be killed. Oh, why talk about this with anyone? But they'll die, you know, or they'll, they'll face hate forever, despite the fact that all they want is to not have these feelings. All they want is to deal with this in a way that is not destructive to anyone. To get help for this, or to even talk about this, is to commit social suicide. If anyone got word that you were actually a pedophile, or someone who had an interest in children sexually in any way, even if you literally had no desire ever to act on it, would sooner kill yourself than do it. And that has happened too, by the way. Look that up. People have committed suicide rather than act on that. You got the balls to do that? I don't know. Kill yourself rather than hurt someone else. That's balls, I must say. People accuse me of being a pedophile apologist. According to the definition and the nuances that go along with it, to be an apologist is to defend something. And in that case, you know what? I will proudly wear the fucking badge of right. being an apologist because I am defending people who have committed no offense. And therefore, there is nothing that I should not be fucking defending. Exactly. Because you know what? Someone has to stand up for a persecuted minority. A persecuted minority is a bad thing. You have a group of people who the majority says suck for some reason. And let's say this persecuted minority is a cult of murderers. All right, you know what? Part of the condition of their group is a crime. Fine. Persecute them because they're breaking the law as a condition of their group. That is one thing. That's acceptable. However, a group of people that just share a commonality and aren't hurting anyone should never be the target of unmitigated fury. But the commonality the pedophiles share is that they all want to harm children. That is not true. Ah, that is not true. The commonality all pedophiles share is that they have sexual fantasies about or involving children. You are again obfuscating the fact that there is a distinction between reality and fantasy. Exactly. And what, I mean, here's the thing. Let's rephrase this argument to make it very clear and to give it a context that's not so emotionally charged, perhaps. Let's talk about video games. Wait, what, is, what does this have to do with video games, right? I'll get to that here. Video games during the 90s especially, and some people still talk about it now, but big during the 90s where video games were the murder simulators. Columbine, they played Doom, thus that made them kill people. I'm sure you remember all of this talk. At least people are old enough to have seen it, right? You remember this. It was ludicrous, wasn't it? The fact that, oh, they were playing Doom. That meant they were killers. What? Are you smoking? Because that's pretty good stuff. I mean, wow. So if I read a fantasy book, I want to do everything in the book. If I have a fantasy of casting magic, I'm going to try to summon a demon. This falls into such a ridiculous level of nonsense where, okay, so with the video game analogy specifically, they were saying kids who play Grand Theft Auto and other violent video games were conditioning themselves to become murderers and they were going to kill people and it was terrible and this game should be banned, right? Because it's training because, as we all know, in real life, whenever you get shot, you can get shot about 16 times and your health bar will just go right. back up. and when you pick up a health pack, your health is instantly restored. And, of course, whenever you want to take out the rocket launcher, you just hit the right button. And it just pops out of nowhere because that's just like real life, And when right? you want to shoot it, you just, pull, you just push the R2 button. And with this fun aside here, this brings up an important issue. So people build up stress and tension throughout their day, and they feel frustrated by their jobs, their day went bad, or whatever have you, and as such, 
they want to release. This can be sexual as well as everything else, and that's important, but hold on to it. So, you have the person who's frustrated or whatever, and they choose to play Grand Theft Auto. And so they start shooting people in the game, and this relieves their anger and frustration in a safe and controlled manner. Let's translate this over to a pedophile who is fantasizing about a child and doing nothing real. Again, nothing real, just fantasizing about a child, having their fun time. And it's the same thing. There's a frustration, a desire that is being released here in a non-harmful fantasy way. To equate that the pedophile is the same as the molester is to say that the guy playing GTA is the same as the murderer. It, it, it's to take a fantasy action and transpose it onto reality when that is insanity. Fantasy and reality are separate, and most everyone can see the distinction. I mean, we can all see it. What is real is real, and what isn't is not real. And to take that away in this debate is inexcusable. You can't just say, well, for these people, that doesn't apply. Why not? Well, they have mental issues. Well, lots of people have mental issues. Are you going to say that they're all completely insane? Oh, you have a mental issue. You are completely insane. That there's no gray area, there's no middle scale, there's no levels of functionality. You have a mental disorder, you are completely deranged and are completely uncontrollable. Being a pedophile does not mean that you have inherently less self-control than anyone else. No, no it doesn't. Because, as I've said several times, many people have many desires that are questionable or illegal, and that doesn't mean that everyone's going to act on them. I would dare say everyone would be a criminal in the world if that were true. If everyone had to act on every desire they had, everyone would be a criminal. Everyone has dark thoughts sometimes. Everyone desires things that even they themselves feel ashamed about, at least once in a great while. Everyone, whether you want to admit it to yourself or not, is fine, but this is true. The fact is, it is on the individual person to control themselves. And to obfuscate that issue in any way is to change blame itself, because people are responsible for their own actions. End of story. You cannot blame pedophilia for a child molester's actions. Just like you cannot blame a video game for a murderer's actions. You cannot blame a media input for someone's choices. You cannot blame a fantasy or a desire for someone's actions. To do this is insanity. It eliminates the idea of personal accountability. For one, you cannot equate the two because you're eliminating the situational offender. The guy who is not a pedophile. Let's stress that. He's not a pedophile. He is someone who enjoys victims of opportunity. Often children because of their weaker situation, weaker physical stature, and their children. They can be traumatized and intimidated easier, they know less. They're good opportunistic victims to look at it coldly. And that's what these people do. And that ties into one of the catch-22s you have with this issue, which is the whole lot of the studies out there are done by people who have a selective pool of, say as an example, child molesters who have already offended, who are already in prison or in mental institutions, and they pick from those people when they do studies about pedophilia, so they get a skewed view of it in the first place, so it's very difficult to even have academic or scholarly or officiated information on this topic. It's in, a, it's in the media. It's a conflation of the terms, and it just... And, well, what it really is is it generates sales for media. That's the big thing, is when they can report on a rash of pedophiles striking everywhere, people buy the media more, they look at the ads more, and they do all this because people are electrically charged by this story. Oh, so a, an abuser was abusing a kid. People get angry, they get worked up, they look at the articles, they comment, and they generate revenue. Remember, hits are sales for the media. Hits are sales. So when people People go in droves to check out the story that's pissing people off, they're making money. And I'm not trying to say that awareness of these things is bad. What I'm trying to say is a scare is generated so easily by the media, and people get whipped up in such a frenzy because of the emotional power of this particular subject. And the unfortunate truth is the innocent and the guilty get swept away equally in this desire to destroy a great evil. And honestly, that is the tragedy I'm addressing here is that the innocent, people who have done no harm, are being destroyed with the same acts that destroys the guilty. Well then that's not a weapon of justice anymore. It's a weapon of murder. You've turned justice into flat oppression. And that's evil. And now, some people are going to say that me doing this video here is suicide, right? I'm talking about pedophilia and I'm defending pedophiles, right? Well, as I already covered many times, the distinctions, child molestation, pedophile, all that, blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm going to fight this. Anyway, you may say this is suicide, and whether you agree with me or not, how could you do this, right? This, how could you even talk about this? Bringing it up, well, someone had to. 
Someone had to be the one to say, whoa, everybody, let's stop this circle jerk feel-good party for a minute and realize what we're doing. And you know what? If that has to be me, fine. I'll be it. And if you want to destroy me or yell at me or call me names and whatever because I bring this point up, I'm going to ignore you. If you come at me with logic and reason and a thought-out opinion as to why I could be wrong, I'll address it. The thing is, if you come at me saying, well, you're just an apologist or you're just a pedophile, I'm going to just ignore you because I already laid it out. And if you are too lazy to watch my video and understand the words that fly out of my face to your head, that is not my problem. That is yours. And if you want to try to come at me with some indignation and misrepresent my points with the, you're a monster and you defend pedophiles and blah, 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 I'm just going to ignore you. And I'm going to continue the talk with people who want to talk about this in a matter that manners. Grow up. Us adults want to have an honest conversation about this that can produce real results. And those people flinging around righteous condemnations of anyone who dares broach this subject, they have nothing to offer to this discussion that matters. They're just ignorant. They don't want to talk reasonably. And you know what? If you don't want to talk reasonably, you don't want to solve this problem. And if you don't want to solve this problem, I don't want to talk to you right now. If you agree with the things that I have said here, and you have the courage to admit that, and furthermore, you have the courage to stand up and echo what I have been saying, that child molesters need to be punished, not non-offending pedophiles. If you agree with this distinction, don't be afraid to share this. Don't be afraid to stand up and say, look, I want to fight the bad guys. I don't want to fight just anyone. I don't want to fight the innocent. I want to fight the guilty. Stand up and say that. Don't be afraid to, because this is right. This cause is just, I say. Don't be afraid to share. Don't be afraid to stand up for a group of people that, as far as I've seen recently, have almost nobody to stand up for them, despite the fact that most of these people have done nothing wrong at all. Someone needs to stand up for those who are persecuted for no reason. I'm doing it, and I encourage you, if you feel the same way, that a group of people, no matter what they might believe, that they should be protected from needless persecution. If you stand for that, then share this. Or at the very least, comment, say something, do something. Or at least think about it and talk about it. Do something to spread this idea that thought, rationale, and a clear objective are the best ways to handle a situation. Not mindless rage and hatred. Just something to think about.